Hi, welcome to Craig Rogers Photography and this quick look at how I salvaged a photo that I thought was going to be uh, a chucked away in the bin. Um, this video does go together with my blog which has got some of the photos uh, that, that I'm talking about. Um, click on the, the little link in the top right hand corner to take you to the blog if you're not watching this uh, video already on the, on the website. So yeah, a few days ago I was uh, at a local site uh, again watching and trying to photograph the short-eared owls that are, are wintering down here near where I live. Um, only a few weeks left now and they'll be heading back north again for the summer. Um, so yeah, the other day I was standing in the freezing cold for an hour waiting for them to show up. Uh, eventually one did show up, uh, but he flew around the field, went to ground for about five minutes where I did manage to get a shot of him on the ground, which was great. Um, but then he took off again and, and I didn't see him again, so not, not a great uh, visit for flight shots. Um, I did however manage to get this shot um, and from a distance you think well actually that's that's not too bad but you know it's it's about uh, probably about 100 meters away so I'm um, shooting with a D810 um, with a 500 f4 lens attached um, and he is quite a quite a distance away I thought no problem I'll, I'll, I'll crop in but then I noticed that it was uh, auto ISO'd at 3600 so not a high ISO for a, for a D810 but certainly not where you want to be now the problem is it's going into a lot of a lot of shadow so as you can see the uh, the amount of noise that's, that's gone on here not particularly in the background but actually on the owl itself it's, it's too much noise it's uh, because it's so far away obviously the noise is more apparent when you when you crop in so I thought oh, I can't really crop in on this but I thought maybe DX Optics Pro 10 might be able to uh, do, a, do a good job of it. So uh, the photo is in Lightroom at the moment and if I try and do some noise recovery on it you can see that yeah they can get rid of it but it just makes the bird very soft and I could play around with these sliders all day but I'm not going to get a sharp photo of, uh, of that bird without any noise. So sort of where Lightroom falls down really on high intensively uh, you know no noise reduction so I've got the EXO Optics Pro 10 installed and the great thing now is they do uh, work together so this photo can be just uh, exported straight here we go into uh, DxO so what it'll do it'll open up the raw file straight into to DX Optics it won't uh, change the raw file it's non-destructive in the same way Lightroom is so let's have a look at this uh, photo okay so if you've not seen DxO before, it looks pretty similar to Lightroom and any other editing uh, software. You've got all your tools down the right-hand side, your photo in the middle, and then uh, your options of your presets and uh, your, your preview in, in the left. Okay, so there's quite a lot of tools in DxO, and it's, it's very powerful. It's actually one of the better um, raw uh, manipulators out there. Now, DxO, they benchmark cameras and lenses, so they... Um, they test intensively every lens, every camera, and, and set benchmarks on them. And with that data, they use that data in this uh, this software to sort of profile, so that uh, the actual manipulation of the raw file is, is pretty damn good. So if I look all around the bottom, it has got things like distortion correction and things like that, so I'll, I'll leave that on there. Um, it, you can see it's set to auto. What it does, it knows that I've shot this with a D810 um, and, a, and a 500mm Nikkor lens, uh, shown you across here on the left. Um, so it, it knows that and it'll import that um, those sort of data associated with those and, and correct them, which is which is brilliant. The one thing it doesn't do is it can't cater if you have a teleconverter on because they just haven't got that data for all the lenses with all the teleconverters. Um, you can still use the software, you just don't get the, um, the profiling as accurate. But put that aside, the only real thing I'm interested in is this section here, it's the noise reduction. And it comes with two versions, high quality fast, which is still better than Lightroom, but not, not amazing, and Prime. Now Prime is only available if you buy the uh, elite version of this software, and it's, it's about £150, and that's, that's a lot of money for just noise reduction, I suppose, but, you know, it, it is worth every penny. The great thing with this is I do just leave it, I, I, I don't set anything else, I just import the file from Lightroom, select Prime, and then export. Now you have got these advanced settings underneath, um, luminance, basically that's the fine detail, so the, the bird itself, the feathers, the face, the bits you don't want to lose like you do in Lightroom, so um, that's the setting to um, the threshold to, to recover the, uh, the detail. Chrominance, uh, if I turn off the noise reduction and uh, zoom in a little bit on the owl, Okay, so in the, in the background, 
Um, let me just move it across. In the background to the owl, you can see all this noise, this colour noise, as they call it. That's chrominance. So what this chrominance setting will do, it will take away all that noise. And that's very easy to get rid of because it's in the background that you don't really need anyway. Low frequency noise, it's in the sort of lighter tones, um, generally on skin, but in this case it's going to be the lighter feathers and you can see little blotches on the, on the feathers and that's that's low frequency noise and it'll it'll obviously try and get rid of that as well and the last thing you can do is, is dead pixels so if you've got a dead pixel on your camera or even a hot pixel it'll look through the image find them and, and get rid of that now I never really do I change these these settings in here uh, I just let DxO do its thing so import the file select prime and then export the file and that's all I do on here um, I better turn it back on first the um, the preview it's not brilliant because the prime noise reduction is so intensive. Even on my um, pretty high spec PC, it will take a good four minutes to actually process that file. So obviously, as you can imagine, it doesn't do a very good preview of it. So it's sort of a, a semi preview, if you like. Okay, so just to recap, I've exported from Lightroom into DxO. I've selected Prime Raw, and I'm going to export to Lightroom. So all I'm going to do um, choices. You can do JPEG, TIFF or DNG. DNG is a raw format, which means that when it goes back into Lightroom, I can still continue to do uh, post-editing on that raw file. So what you'll get when it exports, in fact I'll hit export because it's going to take a good four minutes. When, you, when it does export, what it now does is it copies or it creates a DNG file and imports that into Lightroom. So it doesn't replace the, the raw file and it also doesn't put the settings into that raw file so you still retain the raw file you had originally in Lightroom you now get a new DNG file which has been processed out of DxO Optics I'll let that do its, uh, its thing, it's going to take like I said three to four minutes to, to process it and uh, I'll see you on the other side okay so it's finished its export and it's automatically loaded it back into Lightroom and what it does, you'll notice on here I've got loads of these uh, collections here so when you export a file from um, DxO Optics Pro, it creates a collection file, uh, sorry, a collection folder for the files that it that creates. So the one here is the 15th of March, actually puts a, a date and timestamp on it. What I'm going to do just for this video is I'm going to copy this file and actually place it in one I've created earlier. Okay, so in here I've got the, the, the two files, so you can see I've got the dx the, uh, underscore dxo.dng, that's the default it, it creates. And then the other one I got in there is the original raw file. So you can see the difference between the two. Actually, if you look already, it's applied those um, uh, the profiles, you know, the, the um, camera profiles it's got, onto this photo. And it's just a little bit more colourful, which is, which is great. OK, but let's have a look at how it's handled the noise. So this is the original photo. OK, pretty noisy. And now this is the new photo. Look at that. The noise is gone and the detail is still there. It's it, it's just it's just brilliant. I mean, it's not a great detail shot anyway because it's so far away. But um, and I was wasn't intending to crop in this close, but it actually becomes a usable shot. So let me just uh, go out again. Okay. So the first thing I would uh, do when I'm editing a photograph now, um, now I've run it through the noise reduction, is let's set what crop I want it to uh, to be. Okay, so I can't go in too tight because there's not a lot of detail in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the aspect. So I want a nice, nice wider shot. And I'm going to put him around about the cross of the thirds just to draw your eye there a little bit. Um, let's see what that looks like. There we go. So it's already looking like a nice photo. Now what I'm going to do just for the purpose of this video is I'm going to synchronise the crop between the two. Um, ba -ba 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 yeah, it was already selected. Here we go. So I can synchronize the crop between the two photos. So now we can actually compare like for like. So there's the um, raw file as it was. Here's the new file. Okay, so it's just a little bit better. There's more, there's detail in there and there's a lot less noise. But now what I want to do is I actually want to make this stand out. Now, what I couldn't do before is I couldn't really do any brush edits and anything else because it'll just amplify the noise. But now a lot of the noise is gone. I can I can go and have a, have a nice play in here. So the first thing I'm going to do, because it's annoying the hell out of me, is get rid of this here. I think it's a fly or a bee or something that's, that's flying around. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But I'm going to use the spot tool and I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay, let's have a look. Yep, there we go. So that's that gone. This really was drawing my eye to it. 
And this is what I do with, um, with photos. Whenever anybody asks me, oh, what do you think of my photo? First thing I do is I look at it quickly and I try and visualise where my eyes are going. And it's the best way to do my own, you know, your own photo editing. So I look at this photo at the moment. Where's my eyes going? Well, there's a couple of places it's going. The bright areas in the background are drawing my eyes, which we'll fix in a bit. But also the grass is very bright and it's, it's drawing my eyes. So the other thing I don't like about this photo as it stands at the moment, this was closing in on sunset. It was a lot warmer than this, the, the, the picture was a lot warmer than this. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of warmth on the temperature. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, that'll do. So it's a little bit warmer. OK, and all this grass here is not really blown out. There's no real highlights um, blowing out there, but it's, it's still very bright. So do you know what? I'm going to take the highlights right the way down. There we go, now it's looking like a sunset. Okay, so shadows I'm gonna leave because there's already quite a lot of shadows in there and I don't really wanna bring any detail out in these trees, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. I am gonna increase the whites a little bit though, just to see if I can get that, that bird to, to pop out a little bit. Okay, and then to help it, I'm just gonna decrease the black slightly. There we go, so things are starting to, to pop now and if I just increase the vibrance a little bit, it should give me that nice sunset glowing for what it looked like. Now, this isn't cheating. This is trying to make it look like what, I, what it looked like when I was there. And this is about right. Um, it was a nice sort of warm uh, late evening, or late afternoon as it was, um, glow. It was about half hour before sunset, I think, something like that. OK, so um, oops. what I can do is maybe just help it on its way a little bit is use the target tool in saturation and I'm just going to drag on the actual grass put a little bit of colour in both the green and the yellowy grass there we go, so now you can see it's starting to to pop out and if we do a quick compare to the uh, original it's looking a lot different if you look at the, the owl here it's, it, it's not a lot of detail in it because the noise is just masking that detail but when you go into the new one because the noise is gone majority of it's gone it's actually starting to look like it's got a bit of detail okay so the background okay it's a little bit hazy a little bit too bright so what I'm going to do is use one of the best tools that Adobe added to Lightroom is the dehaze tool um, I believe it's only in the CC version that uh, you get this dehaze tool um, but to be honest why, why wouldn't you be on the CC version these days it works out cheaper OK, so I've had a little bit of dehaze and it's just taking a bit of a haze out of the background. OK, so that's all that done. But to me, it's, it's quite a nice photo now, but it's still the, the bird's still a little bit dark. It, it needs to, to pop out of the, the photo a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some brushing. OK, so I selected the brush tool and I'm going to go to one to one. Now, rule one of uh, wildlife photography, particularly owls, is obviously the eyes so the eyes are nice and nice and bright but why not give it a little bit of iris enhance um, you'll be careful with this tool because if you overdo it people say hang on a minute you've you've made those eyes look different and that's not what we're trying to achieve here we're not trying to make the eyes look different we're just trying to make them stand out a little bit help them on their way so there we go they're a little bit a little bit brighter so we go back out now they're, they're sort of popping out of the, out of the photo a little bit OK, so another brush. I've got my own custom brush that I call Feather Detailer. Um, I've taken a lot of photos of birds lately, so I've just set this as a, as a preset. And all this is doing is adding a little bit of sharpness, taking the blacks and the shadows down a little bit, and bringing the whites out a little bit. So hopefully it'll make, it, uh, make the detail pop a little bit. So let me just increase the brush. Now you'll notice I'm going to use a brush here without an auto mask. OK, not quite that big. And I'm just going to go to town on brushing this owl. Now you notice I'm brushing the background which is uh, not what I want because I'm making the background pop out a little bit. Okay there's a reason why I do this. If I turn the mask on you can see what I've painted. Now if I'd use auto mask it would be picking all these little black blotches in the, the feathers and trying to mask them as well but I don't want to do that but because the background is quite soft and blurry which is what we want if I now use the erase tool either holding the alt key down or, or select an arrays and I have auto mask on here I can then brush around the bird and it's got a better job at actually uh, deleting 
the bits I don't want. So add it on and deleting is actually quicker than trying to brush it all in. Now I'm going a bit quick here, but normally, you know, if this was a, a proper photo that I was going to uh, work on, I'd be taking my time a little bit longer on here and perhaps zooming in to do it. Although you can see it's making a pretty good job of getting the over mask out. Okay, just put a little bit on his head that I missed. Oops, a bit too much. Take that out. And there's a little bit left on the top. And there's also a tad under his wing. Okay, that'll do for now. Okay. So what that's done, that's uh, hopefully made the, the feathers pop a little bit. Let's have a look. Yep, it's starting to look quite quite nice now. And what I'm also going to do, around his, around his face and his body here, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit lost. Um, it's still not looking as, as good as I want it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the white brush. Uh, that'll do 51. And I'm just going to paint in the bits that are dark. Okay, so under his wing there. Now people might say this is cheating, but it's, 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 it's not cheating, it's the camera can't capture what your eyes capture. Okay, so what, it's, what you're actually doing is making the photo look like what the actual photo looked like when it was there. Yeah, okay, you can cheat and do stuff that, that's, that's not there, but uh, this is simply just helping it on its way. Okay, I'm going to take the highlights out of that as well, because I've increased the white, so it's going to increase the highlights. And I've just masked the highlights back out. So have a look what that looks like. Very nice, just on the top of the head there. Um, just going to remove some of those highlights. As well as, oops, not that many. Just remove some of the highlights out. Let's have a look. Okay, so there we go. Um, so now the bird has, has popped a little bit. So if I hold the uh, slash key down, it'll show me what it looked like when it came out of DxO. So that's that's what it looked like when it came out of DxO. That's not what it looks like. Okay, with just a couple of slides and a couple of brush strokes, I've made that uh, a lot better photo. And this thing here, look, with that little fly or whatever it is, as soon as it comes back in, it's like, oh, what's that there? It's, it's the fly. Okay, and what's it look like compared to the original RAW file? A heck of a lot better. Okay, so it's, it's, I wouldn't have used this photo, and I, I wouldn't have edited this photo in Lightroom because it wouldn't have been able to do it that, uh, that well. Okay, so, I'm happy with that as it is? No, not really, because I still don't like these bright bits that are sh um, shining through the trees. Now what I think it is, um, if you'd seen the, the uncropped photo, there's actually a building site in the next field and these are, I think, this sort of concrete walls or something that, that the sun's hitting and obviously it's reflecting through the trees. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use another brush on this and I'm actually going to use the, the preset, the built-in preset of the burn tool which, which darkens things down. Um, what I'm also going to do at the same time, if we look at this background, there's still a little tiny bit of noise in there so why not get rid of it? So what I'm going to do with my brush tool is I'm going to do the burn, but I'm also going to set the noise on this brush to maximum. Okay, so maximum reduction. I'm going to make it a nice big brush, and I'm just going to darken down this just to get rid of the bright details coming through the trees. Okay, I only need to go down as far as the sort of green grass. Let's put the mask on. What I don't want to do is obviously darken down, which I think I'll probably have there a little bit. I don't want to go over the bird. So what I'm going to have to do here, and this is um, we just have to take a little bit of time to do it, is um, do another mask. So auto mask it. Uh, again, I would probably take a lot longer doing this with a real photo, but let me just, and the mask is doing wonders there, the auto mask, so it's not drawing over the, the wings there, it's working it out for me. Oh, 
Okay, almost there, just around his tail feathers. Perfect, and then turn off the auto mask, fill the rest. Almost done. Okay, so I take the, the mask off. Now, what you'll find is that bird against that dark background is starting to really pop out of the photo. And if we zoom in, now we've got zero noise. Okay, so very, very cleaned up photograph. There's still a little bit of noise on the bird and the, and the, the detail, like I said, is not quite there, but it's not going to be considering how far away the bird was. But from that angle now, it's, it's really popping. So there's just one thing that I'm going to add to this photo, and that's, look at this lovely grass. It's quite a lot of detail in some of this grass, um, but it, again, it's not really popping. As, as far as I'm concerned, it should be part of the photo as much as the owl is part of the photo. So yet again another brush, or I could do um, a graduated filter on here, but I will will brush it in instead. And I'm just going to go to the clarity brush, that'll do 40, and I'm just going to paint some clarity over the top of the grass. And hopefully you will see the grass will start to pop along with the owl. Okay, and there we go. So there is a quick edit of a photo which has pretty much gone from this photo without its crop. So let me just uh, reset that to take its crop away. So that was the photo, the straight out of the camera, the noisy photo with the, the building side behind is the, the mess you can see that was shining through the tree. I think actually it's just a, a, a lump of earth that they've dug out for foundations or something. Oops. Um, which is very noisy. I didn't mean to zoom in, but at least you saw the noise. And then from that photo, which I almost deleted, but I gave it a second chance, we've actually got an actual very usable photo. So there you go. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, I think you need to spend your money on DxO, because uh, trust me, if you really want to get rid of your noisy photos, then uh, DxO is, is definitely the way to go. It's It's been a... It's been a wonderful tool and, and I, I'll continue to use it for, for a long time on any, any high ISO photos. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned.